Hi everyone. So in today's lecture, we'll understand what are the applications of uh, autoencoder in data compression, denoising, and feature learning. So when we talk about data compression, or let's say in specific image compression. So image compression is uh, one of the applications of uh, autoencoder network. In this, the raw input image can be passed to the encoder network and uh, we can obtain a compressed dimension of the encoded data. This is what we are talking about, the image compression. So the autoencoder network uh, ways can be learned by the reconstructing of the image from the compressed encoding using the decoder network. What I mean to say that, like it's fairly very, very simple. Like you have this encoder network And in this encoder network, we send the original data, we send the main data or the, let's say, any original data for that matter. And uh, that encoder is then used to compress my image. And then we get this compressed data. We get this compressed data. So this was what, uh, you know, the data compression is all about, that encoder simply compresses the data. And this is what I said that, that, uh, you know, the autoencoder network uh, weights can be learned by reconstructing the image from the compressed encoding using the decoder network. So we have the decoder network. We have the decoder network. And then since this Encoder decoder has worked and learned from the um, you know data that how is the original data and how does the compressed looks like and what is the actual form of the compressed data. We can simply send this data back into the decoder and what decoder will do since it has learned all the weights, it will reconstruct my data. It will reconstruct my data. So. You know, that's what the data compression. So of course, since the model is very much optimized in terms of um, understanding or, you know, making the picture get back into the original state from the compressed state, we can use this autoencoder network for putting up all the data into the compressed form. Of course, when you have the data in the compressed form, we can have a lot of storage. Right, And whenever we require to have the original structure of the image back, we can simply pass the encoded one into the decoder and decoder will give me the original image of the compressed one. So that's one of the application of the um, uh, autoencoder, that is the data compression. Denoising, if you talk about denoising as such, so in the real world, raw input data is often noisy in nature, we know this. And to train a robust supervised model requires clean and noiseless data. So autoencoders can be used to denoise the data. So basically what happens that, uh, let me just show you. So when we talk about denoising the data, in this what happens, you have, you have some sort of image and uh, that image is quite noisy. I mean, again, you have like sample image, I'm just making it. But this image is quite noisy, right? It has lots of blurry thing. And let's say, you know, the pixels are not clear, we can say. So the image denoising is, of course, one of the very popular applications where the autoencoder try to reconstruct the noiseless image from a noisy input. So what happens that we have the input layer and that particular input layer is, of course, there with the hidden layer. And we have the output layer like this. And you have these kind of attachments like this.
you know, I'm not making all the attachments, I'm just giving you an example. So in this case, what is happening? The noisy input image is fed into the auto encoder as input, and the output is noiseless output. It is constructed by minimizing the reconstruction loss. So in the auto encoder chapter, we have understood about that what exactly the reconstruction loss. With the help of reconstruction loss itself, the machine understand that how much uh, you know when it is making the um, encoded image back into the original form it compares with the actual image and then the reconstruction loss is being calculated so since this model has been trained so many times that the reconstruction loss is very very less even if we are having a noisy input after having the noisy input that the decoder machine takes the data and simply it gives me back with the no noise or noiseless input so simply it, it takes this and you know when you do it you will find it out that you get a noiseless complete nice picture. So of course, that's one of the benefit of uh, applications of uh, auto encoder. Now talking about the one of the more ap application of auto encoder that is your uh, feature learning. If you talk about the feature learning, well, feature learning is nothing. Feature learning is all about taking up the data and, you know, converting it back into a lower dimension space. So auto encoders uh, can be used as feature extractor for classification or regression task. Auto encoders can uh, you know, take an unlabeled data to learn efficient coding about the structure uh, and can be used for supervised learning tasks as well. So basically after training an auto encoder network using a sample of training data, we can ignore a decoder part of the auto encoder and only use the encoder to convert raw input of a higher dimension to a lower dimension inputted space. And this is what I was talking about that uh, you have, uh, you know, if I just come down a bit. You have this kind of neural network structure. We have like all the, uh, you know, attachments like this, not doing everything, but just to make you know. So we have like several of these things. And uh, what exactly is happening? You have your raw input, which is going through the network like this. And from here, it's, of course, since the weights are and everything is being trained, this is the new response or new representation of the same data, but in lower dimensional space that we get. And this is what we say that, um, you know, feature extraction, we are actually making the feature go into the higher to the lower dimensional space. And of course, we have also discussed about that, hey, what's the difference between uh, principal component analysis and the feature extraction as such? So remember, I told you that PCA finds the direction where the maximum variance is lying, but over here, uh, this is more about compressing from the higher dimension to the lower dimensional space, um, keeping all the information intact. So these are the several applications of uh, your auto encoder and uh, we'll meet in the next lecture. Thank you so much.